Hello everybody, it's Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And we're in a hotel room, speaking quietly because it's... Uh, I'm not sure what everyone else is doing, but we don't want to disturb anybody. Um, and we've been working really hard this week, doing all sorts of things, and we're just having a little rest and talking to you. <laughs> Very late at night, <laughs> just before we go to bed, I'm afraid. <laughs> I've just been... Um, talking to Bridget about the fact that we did this this week we did another thing where we had a group of people and they each wrote on a piece of paper the answer to a sort of question it was to write a poem called Our God is Many Things um, and the, the task was to <coughs> simply write in a few letters uh, where God was in their life or what, what is God in their life and we asked them to promise, as we always do, that they would tell a tell the truth, which hopefully they did, and b tell them that, that not to worry because no one would know who had written what. So after they'd all written their their one line, we collected in the pieces of paper and then put it read them in random order, as he usually does, and it always sounds like a poem. And it always includes, or almost always includes, a, a terrific variety of mm. views and expressions about God. Mm. And um, we were saying that when people talk about testimonies in the church, they understandably, they're usually very positive, and God comes out of them very well, because people don't want to be disrespectful and all that but the fact is that what you hear from a group of ordinary believers is an, an, an extraordinary hodgepodge of emotions and um, responses to the invitation to be really open about what they're feeling and what's happening to them and the results were, were the same really and uh, some really moving um, some moving things came out of that and I've done it a few times in the past but I never died I get very excited about hearing what's coming out I think what it does is is bring us back to something that we thought about Scargill House when we'd only been there for a little while is that what we wanted uh, it's a retreat centre and a conference centre but we also wanted it to be a safe place where you could say dangerous things and sometimes if you can be anonymous and just creep out of your little uh, hiding place to say something you're really feeling and thinking it feels quite dangerous for you because there is such a sense that you might be jumped on and I think the church is changing it is understanding it's got to that that people are fragile beings and that we don't know much really um, but we also did a, a workshop um, called long ago at school and that was interesting as well because for a lot of us school conjures up a thousand different things and I was thinking myself about the smells connected with school and I'm not talking about disgusting smells I'm talking about things like I was at school so long ago that the ink was made of at primary school. It was sort of powder and it was mixed with water to make the ink and there was a particular smell. Mm. There was a smell of the food that came in great long tins for us at lunchtime, which had a very peculiar smell. Do you did that did that connect with you, Adrian? The idea of Not the smell so much. I mean I do have very distinct memories, but I listed them a while ago, and oddly enough, they were finite. I reached a point where I couldn't think of any more. But they included they included little positive things. I mean, I remember once we were in, I was in a classroom, and a, a, a visiting man came, and he said, does anyone know a word that means it's bound to happen? And I knew the word inevitable, oh, wow. which I said... <laughs> and uh, he was delighted, and I was so all I remember is that moment of achievement. But I then I also remember another man coming who asked whether we all went to Sunday school, and I was terrified of the fact that I didn't go to Sunday school. And 
people put their hands up and said, I went to such, such and such a school and I went to this such and such a school. And then I said, foolishly, I went to the same Sunday school as one of these boys. <laughs> and he said, no, you don't. You don't go to the same one as me. And I sa said something about it being um, one with the same name. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but just sheer... Uh, I mean, the, the, you forget the weight of doom that falls across you when you yeah. get into that. Yeah. Um, I remember a, p a boy having an epileptic fit in the seat behind me in the classroom, and I remember the that was the when I was in the headmaster's class, and the headmaster saying, "Don't worry, I know what it's about." I mean, wondering what he meant by that, mm. but obviously he meant mm. he knew he suffered from this mm. uh, petty mal, probably. Mm. You see, I'm interested because I think I think the two <coughs> extremes that you've mentioned, they are what happens when you start to think about something in the past, aren't they? They the 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 worst comes up to hit you, and the best comes up to hit you. But all the ordinariness of ordinary days just mm. sit there, not too uncomfortably, um, which is quite interesting, really. Um, and I and you know we've just before this before these workshops and we've just done an evening haven't we that's why we're so late um, we did a weekend at Scargo House uh, called Heaven's Headlines which I think we mentioned we were going to do last week and that was full of the small things that either make heaven happy make God happy just as Jesus rejoiced over really small things like the widow who put in what we always happily call two mites um, and the sadness with the rich young man who didn't didn't feel he could follow and and that is with us isn't it you know the things that make us sad and things that make us happy are are not always massive things. They can be a small thing, like the fact that you knew. What was the word you knew? The word I knew was inevitable. Well, there you go, inevitable. Well, that would have been me, because I liked words so much. Yes, yeah, but even so, that moment, you still remember it. You still remember the feeling. Um, I think, uh, having watched with our very small grandson a lot of Peppa Pig, um, and Miss Rabbit always says, well, you are a clever clogs yes, right. <laughs> to, to the little elephant. I think you were a bit of a clever clogs. I also m always remember the Christmas post thing because oh, the uh, one of the boys would be a postman, <coughs> excuse me, for the morning, coming around with the post that was collected from the post boxes that all the children brought to give to their friends. And there was a, a feeling of, rabid hope and despairing fear that people would not be receive any cards yeah. when the when the small postman appeared mm. um but i suppose you learn a lot of things through that I mean, you learn in a p fairly safe way uh, what happens inside you mm. um no, I, I he just uh, I just then remembered I hadn't thought about it for years. I remember uh, having a bringing a pair of new football boots to um, school, junior school. I mean, when I was about ten, and hanging them in the lobby so that people wouldn't see them, so that when they when I said I got some new football boots, they wouldn't believe me. And then as they <laughs> left, they would see them hanging on the peg. <laughs> I was thinking, I know this is a randomly random thought, but it would be interesting if ever we were able to know what the good memories and the, and the worst memories for Jesus would have been. Now, obviously, the most worst one would have been crucifixion. I know that. But I meant the small worsts and bests because they are what you remember, like hanging your football boots up. Mm. and that being a, a, a great moment and I mean one of my strongest memories um, at primary school was you know it was a convent school I think I don't know if I've ever talked about this before probably but um, a little bird a little sparrow fell from a tree into the playground and I thinking I knew what to do uh, rushed off to the nun who was on playground duty 
and grabbed her to say that a bird had fallen out of the tree and her response to me was, don't touch my robe, it's sacred. And from then I think an image of God was created that took years and years, the idea that there was an untouchableness. I mean, she was probably just having a bad day. But it is interesting. I mean, if, if you, what would be, if, if you could imagine it, what would be the small good memories for Jesus? The small good memories? Yes, and then the small bad ones. Well, I think we, we were talking about that. I mean, as far as one can tell, the centurion who wanted his servant healed and Jesus... I must have looked as though he was about to go to him and the man said no you don't need to come because uh, I know you've only got to say the word yeah and he was absolutely thrilled to find somebody with that kind of belief yeah um, I've never been quite able to sort that out what that means well except that I suppose you know he was so conscious of all the people that wanted miracles but didn't really believe in following a way that was so so lacking in hype and lacking in kudos you know lacking in ego um so i mean that is an extraordinary thing when you think of it i mean that is extraordinary for the centurion to say no you don't even need to come yeah. i mean just just say it yeah. that is an amazing faith really and it reminds me adrian of many many years ago um when we knew a girl who had been through all sorts of trauma and been in your secure unit and been in psychiatric unit and ended up in a b and b which wasn't really a b and b uh it was horrid absolutely horrid she was very lonely and she ended up having a relationship with a married man and i talked to her in a phone box late at night and she was in a dreadful state and i said i'll pray for you and she said don't you something rather do that you know whose side he'll be on <laughs> and and i've always thought well what f sort of faith is that it's huge yeah. that her concern was that if i prayed this man would go back to his wife which i think he did anyway but um and i mean i know that sounds weird but there was a faith there. Yeah, no, there. absolutely. Of course there was a faith there, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I was fantasizing about, I, I wrote this limerick about God speaking to Jesus as a boy after he'd run off, not run off, but disappeared to the temple and worried his, his uh, parents for three <laughs> days. God saying to him, um, I, was, I was proud of you. Yeah, it was good to what you did. Um, I made a lot of sense, but um, yeah, so he might have said, you were on the very cusp of beginning a not perfect life. You know, you, it, was the, it was the edge of a, yeah. uh, an, an, a, 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 a sin that, and so go home and be 12 and don't mess about, do what you're told. Mm. And the time will come when mm. those things will you can make your own mind up about. I mean, someone was saying to me today, and we've all said it at times, you know, in the Gospel of John it says, if, if all the things Jesus did were put in the book, it would be too much to put in the book. Oh, I wish I mean, there had been a few more, there really. Are, there are obviously reams and reams of things that happened to him. And, I suppose we assume that the mm. the memories are the ones that emerged are the ones that people thought were important. Yes. I, don't I mean, know. I suppose that all the days where it was Jesus got up and uh, you know went and found some breakfast and uh, which there must have been many days and then walked many miles and not a lot happened. Mm. There aren't a lot of those. That's the problem, isn't it? And that can happen. You t you started by talking about testimonies. But in a way, that can be the problem there, can't it? There may be one really good thing that happened to you. Yeah. Um, but unless you also say, and then for a great many days, weeks, months, not a lot happened, and mm. I just carried on getting up in the morning and trying to be quite nice if I possibly could and, um, yeah. and going to bed again, they're, they're not very exciting. The same thing happened with Paul, didn't it? That he, 
stayed in places for years. That's absolutely true. And you only you hear a, a tiny verses. fragment of absolutely the right. things that have that That's happened a very there. Good point. I mean, you know, sometimes for a very long time, battling it out, you know, fielding questions and uh, discussing things and hoping that everything would kind of suddenly surge into something positive. But do you, do you think we've got it wrong with our testimonies? I mean, it, the, the, the New Testament is full of people saying everything was great. and but, but when you actually look into the middle of it, as usual, take someone like Dorcas, you know, who, who was in act, who, was, um, who died, and they prayed for her. People knew her, but she wasn't healed. Um, so obviously for them that didn't work out. Then Peter appeared and um, suddenly she lived. She, he prayed for her and she was mm. she was healed. It's, not, it's never smooth, is it? I've never been able to b turn the Bible into a book where everything happens always the same, the same ways and same times. No. But I, I feel, feel for these people we've known who've been through such desert times and mm. often it, it does seem that circumstances have built up around them and made it very difficult for them to do the simple thing that everyone says you do if you want to be have a joy some joy in your faith or in, yeah. in God and uh, I don't know I don't I don't still don't know the best way to help them um, I don't know I know no. I know we need to be with them in it and not stand apart from that. But no, uh, but I mean, there must be so many ways. I mean, we've been working uh, just in the last couple of days with an old friend of yours, Ben Eccleston, that I think we may have mentioned last week as an artist and works with a charity that um, helps people to explore all sorts of things uh, through various types of art, quite wide, wide variety of stuff. But in there, a lot of them are people who don't get involved in other sorts of groups, who don't mm. feel very confident to get involved with anything really, mm. and are again peeping out from their burrow to think, is it all right to come out? Is it all right to make a mess on a piece of paper? Is it all right to create something out of pebbles from the beach? Is it all right? And the same with writing. Is it all right to try and write something that that I am going to read to other people. Is that okay? And we've often sat with people and non known that they're just putting something out there on the table, saying something that has hurt them for years, or something that's very, very special for them. Mm. Just putting it out there on the table is coming out of their burrow in a safe place. Mm. Well, I like think the safety is crucial, isn't it? Yes, really. Well, you only have to think. I mean, I think I'm thinking of timid wild animals that oh. come out when there's nothing around and you see it, don't you? You see it with rabbits and with other things. They oh. sort of come out and nose about and, and they're looking all the time to see if it's safe. Mm. And if one can create that for people, a sunny, warm place where they can come out and mm. enjoy being being there for a little while, that's mm. not a small thing, is it? Well, it's not. If someone came this week and said to me, I said, I just want to say thank you for what, you know, today, things have happened today, and then he um he just sort of stood there a bit and I said um well that's really nice of you and just sort of looked at him and he and then he started talking about these horrible feelings inside him um that he wished weren't there um and I and I think it was because he felt safe yes when and that is something we can all do, isn't it? It's a, it's very interesting that how do you do it? I mean, you might be among a crowd, but can you, just in the way that you are, create this sort of just thinking of it as a little sunny area that they can creep out into and, and be there for a little while, feeling safe? Um, 
and I and I know experts you know expert counsellors other people are able to do this but I think we can all do it much more than we think we can mm. um, and I don't even think it's a case of amount of time I think it's a case of being in the moment with somebody do you and and just just it being I, I safe think, because but I think you I, I personally sense when people realize that you you invited them into your world in a way that is different oh well that's interesting that you, if they feel yours is a safe world yeah well they I, th I think I mean we, we as we were talking about the Pritchang ruler I think that, that there probably was quite a bond between them as they while, while they were together and he it could have gone either way maybe it did later on I don't know but I just, I just, I'm really with those those who are struggling with things mm -hmm. they remember that have held them up and tripped them up and mm -hmm. made life difficult. And I'm quite sure um, God is not crunching them or blaming them or bashing them. Um, it takes a while to believe mm -hmm. that. And nothing's gone very right. Anyway, we don't mm -hmm. want to wake anybody up. No, I hope yeah. we haven't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> working anybody up in this hotel and I have to tell you we're going to uh, go to bed in a minute yeah. <laughs> to speak right. to you next week good bye night bye, bye.